Broadcasting live from Business Radio X Studios in Atlanta, Georgia, it's time for Learning Insights. Featuring learning professionals, improving performance to drive business results. Lee Cantor here, another episode of Learning Insights, and this is going to be a good one. But before we get started, it's important to recognize our sponsor, Training Pros. We could not be doing this show without their support. Today on Learning Insights, we have with us Tammy Cohen with InfoMart. Welcome, Tammy. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to be here. Well, before we get too far into things, tell us about InfoMart. How are you serving folks? Well, we do background checks globally. Um, and right now we have innovated a COVID-19 SaaS platform. So we're sort of doing a, a little bit extra in the side of screening now for employers. And then uh, can you talk a little bit about how you got into this line of work? I actually started the business 30 years ago when uh, background checks were not really known of. So the industry was definitely in its infancy. And I've been through the industry as, you know, data has become available. We started with a fax machine. So it's been an interesting journey of data and information to bring us now to, you know, an age where data just moves in, you know, milliseconds. And then um, as part of the growth of your company, it's grown in terms of not only just size and people you serve, but your organization has grown quite a bit as well, right? Yes, we are considered in the top 10 largest in the industry. Um, We're known for our work culture and our employee engagement, um, and as well as being an innovator of the industry. So now as you've grown and had to kind of evolve as the times have changed over the years, are you seeing this kind of new world of work kind of bubbling up where now this hybrid of in-person, remote, you know, not only just in one office, but globally, like there's a lot of challenges today. There is, but I, I really like, I mean, I'm really excited about it because it's given us an opportunity to really pioneer this new world of work and to create, you know, the workforce and the work environment that we really want to have. So it's sort of, as much as it is a challenge, I think it's also a really exciting time. So now how is your firm attacking it? So we are attacking it from all angles. Um, Everything from, you know, a lot of research, looking at best practices and, and wanting to be a best practice, but, Everything from, you know, now it changes. How does your managers manage the workforce? Uh, How do you train your workforce? That's changed. How you answer your phone? That's changed. You know, even getting your mail, there's so much in the workforce that's changed. And I think one of the things that's so important to have people like training pros is that as a workforce, you're probably not equipped to make all these changes. And if you can have someone to take your policy, your procedures, and put them out to your workforce, you're really moving quickly into the new world of work. And then how did you kind of maintain that culture when some of your uh, workers are maybe third party in their contract, and then you have your existing uh, employees? Like, how do you kind of get them all, you know, singing from the same page? So what we've done is lots of surveys. We do so many surveys um, and send them out, get get the, the census of what's going on, and then put together a policy. And then we watch it, and then we make sure that it works. And if it doesn't work, then we, we keep revising and, and just keep working things out till we get to the perfect norm for our, our workforce and contractors. And then how do you... Um... How are you deciding which kind of things to test and to um, explore? Is it do you have is that from the leadership team? Or are you listening to the folks you know on the boots on the ground? Like how do you have that kind of line of communication where the information not only can be shared but also the best practices can be implemented? You know, I think it all begins with the work culture you started out with pre COVID. So we have a work culture of, you know, give us your ideas. We want to hear them. There's no bad idea. We're very, we embrace change. I think that's the only way you can be an innovator is if you have a workforce that understands it might change overnight. So having that uh, attitude already. So in Slack, we have, uh, you know, water cooler channel and anybody and everybody, we encourage them, you know, put your ideas there. It doesn't matter. There's not a bad idea. Uh, so we sort of take a lot of information from there. 
we, uh, you know, we're looking at what other people are doing and um, just trying to see if that would work in our workforce. And are you looking for other com- what other competitors are doing, or are you just looking for best practices? It doesn't matter what industry. I think as far as in our industry, InfoMart is really um, a leader when it comes to you know work culture. So I think that our industry sort of looks to InfoMart and what we do. But we're just looking out across the world, you know, what's even happening in Australia. I mean, what's happening in Europe? What, what's the best practice here in the U.S.? And my HR team is really driven to constantly be, you know, catching this information and putting it out to the entire workforce. Hey, there's a great article today. Or putting it on our intranet, trying to just constantly give people pieces of information that they're involved in. But then we can look at what we think would really work for us and put that into practice. So, so how does that happen? Like, say somebody finds something in Australia, some company is doing this innovative thing, they bring it up to, I guess, leadership and say, hey, is there a way that we can implement a version of this that might fit into our organization? And then do you do like a pilot of it? Like, how does it kind of go from the idea to actually, you know, it being implemented? So generally what we do is we take that idea and we look at all the components of it. And then we put out a survey. Are you interested in this? How would you see this work? How are you working? So we can see where it fits. And then we'll usually put out, uh, so say an interesting one was we had a tailgate event that we wanted to do. So uh, we put it out in a survey, you know, how many people would enjoy, da, 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 da. And when we all get down to the end, only four or five people signed up. So it's sort of that experimenting all the time with, but asking all those questions of who wants to be involved, will this work before you put it out? And then sometimes you put them out and then they're a flop. And you just got to know that that's the way it's going to be. So you measure all the results. And then if it's a flop, that's not the end of the world. Uh, you just try another idea. Oh, that, oh definitely. Uh People tease me because you might not like my first idea, but that's okay because I got a hundred more behind it. So we're constantly changing. I mean, I think a good workforce it has to embrace change and has to constantly be looking to change and understand things don't work. And when they don't work, you don't get upset and complain. You just say, hey, this is not working out for me. And then we move on to the next type of event. So we've tried to now go to more like virtual events of, of special you know, groups. So if you have children, do you want to be in a, you know, a special group weekly, just have 30 minutes to talk. Um, So, you know, when people that were into gardening, you know, we were trying to look at putting people together in groups and that worked really well. Now, um, can you share us uh, one of these experiments that worked like beyond your wildest dreams, like something that was a big, like a home run? So I think that I would, I would look at uh, I know this sounds silly, but Slack, you know, we've used Slack for years. And then we finally just really said, hey, everybody, we need to communicate on Slack to eliminate email and that type of thing. And I, I thought that we were going to really have a hard time of it, but it is really picked up quickly. And the entire organization is communicating so quickly and so fast that I think in many ways we're performing better than when we were all in an office together. So I think, you know, just it's small, but some of these small things are major in the big scheme of things. And then let's talk a little bit about how when the pandemic hit and then it's kind of an all hands on deck that this is a real thing. Um, how did your leadership team kind of uh, navigate that kind of that point of crisis? My, I, I am amazed with my leadership team because you know, when it first hit, I was the girl who went to Michael's to get my crafts, and then I went to Home Depot to get my flowers, because I sort of thought, oh, this could be, you know, some time off, let's enjoy it, and never thinking that this was really what was going to happen. But fortunately, I have a team that really saw this big picture, and immediately, within a week, we deployed 150 people to their homes, and because we do background checks, the level of security that had to be implemented across the board was was huge. It was a huge lift. And my team did it seamlessly. And But I think a lot of that goes back to your employee culture and that if you have a culture where you foster a long tenure, when things of crisis happen, people jump in and know exactly what to do and how to handle it. And they're very committed to the organization. So I think that our culture created this 
immediacy and the need to make sure that we, we, we served our clients and nothing fell through the cracks. And actually nothing fell through the cracks. It was, it was amazing. And then having gone through that, that exercise for yourself, did that help you have the confidence and the ability to then transfer that knowledge to your clients? I think that our clients could see it in the sense that when, um, because of what we do, we're accessing information sources in courthouses for criminal history. Well, when the pandemic hit, so many of the courthouses closed and many of our competitors couldn't operate. But because we'd been in business so long and the tenured uh, employees that I had, they knew the more manual ways of getting information and back to days that, you know, 15 years ago ways things worked. So we were actually able to service our clients. And I think that made a huge difference in, in them recognizing the strengths that we have uh, as far as being a, you know, leader in the industry. And how do you kind of uh, capture that institutional knowledge that, like you said, that that's becomes a superpower because it, you've been doing it for a while. So there is that kind of history and that historical context on how to do things. And there might be other ways that aren't the current way that you can get around things. How do you kind of capture that and then have that flow through uh, to your newer employees that maybe don't have that history in the business and the industry? So that is a challenge in, in a remote workforce. And it goes back to training, uh, having, you know, constant and consistent training, constantly learning. Um, you know, uh, I think that has been huge. And, and companies like Training Pro, when they're able to come in and give you that resource and help you, you know, get down that road with your employees, it's invaluable. And um, for you at this stage of and growth of your company, what do you need more of? Time. <laughs> it seems like uh, it seems like, and I think every entrepreneur is out there right now saying, "I feel like I'm running a race every day." Uh, and I, if everything that I do, I, I end the day and say, "Oh wow, it flew by," and I still have all of this I can do. So uh, I would actually say time. <laughs> Now, is there, um, like from your prospective client standpoint, what is the pain that they're having where your um, service is the solution? The, 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 the pain point that we were having, you know, up until probably two months ago was getting information. So doing a background check, the courts were closed, colleges were closed, so you couldn't get education verification. Employers were closed, so it was a challenging to get an employment verification. But actually, <laughs> employers stopped hiring, so background checks sort of stopped. Uh, and that's when my team sort of pivoted, and we created this COVID SaaS platform. And fortunately, it has really taken off. So that has sort of filled a really unique gap for our, our, our clients in that we have now have this solution for them that's uh, that's sort of handling a lot of problems they are having right now, even though they're not necessarily hiring and screening, they can now take care of their existing workforce. Now, do you have any advice for the folks out there um, that maybe haven't had the experience in managing a remote workforce like you have any kind of do's and don'ts? You know, I would say you have to be just open-minded and really look at all areas and, and explore them and think about them just to not close your mind to anything that might seem like it's too odd because it's a new world of work and it's exciting to look at uh, the different things as well as, you know, listen to your workforce, listen to the people that you lead. What do they really think is best for your organization and just keep working it through. It, it's not a make a decision and this works today. Uh, it, it could break tomorrow and you just got to pick it up and figure the next step out. I think, Looking at it as, as being exciting and fun and an adventure is a lot easier than looking at this as a heavy lift. And then it sounds like you, uh, you're a big believer in taking shots and experimenting, but measuring the results and, and like doubling down on what's working and then discarding what isn't. Exactly. You, you have to. I mean, in this day and age, you can't waste time. And if something's not working, you just don't do it because it looks good on paper. You do it because it works for your workforce or it works for your customers. 
Well, thank you, Tammy, for sharing your story today. If somebody wants to get a hold of you or somebody on your team, uh, what's the website? It is backgroundscreening.com. Backgroundscreening.com. Well, thank you again for sharing your story. You're doing important work, and we appreciate you. Thank you. All right. This is Lee Cantor. We will see you all next time on Learning Insights. And remember, we could not be doing this work without our good friends at Training Pros. So please support them so we can continue to share these important stories. Although we stop, 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 stop.